part 3 regulation of TCA cycle. So how to control TCA cycle? Basically there are three points of control within the cycle itself. One is from enzyme citrate synthase which inhibited by ATP, NADH and succinyl-CoA which is also a product of inhibition by citrate. Second is isocitrate dehydrogenase which can be activated by level of ADP and NAD plus and inhibited by ATP and NADH molecule. Third is using alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex where this enzyme can be inhibited by ATP, NADH and succinyl-CoA. And this enzyme can also be activated by ADP and NAD+. So those are the three control points within the cycle. And one control point outside the cycle, which is pyruvate dehydrogenase, which can be inhibited by ATP and NADH, also a product inhibition by acetyl coenzyme A. So basically, for isocitrate dehydrogenase, and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, how they can regulate the TCA cycle. The control of citric acid cycle or TCA cycle, one we can see from this figure that pyruvate is inhibited by ATP, acetyl-CoA and NADH. And the first step in the cycle itself is Step 1, inhibited by ATP, NADH, succinyl-CoA and citrate. And later on, step 2 and step 3 in the cycle, which used to... Uh, next is step 2 and step 3 in the cycle itself, which can be inhibited by ATP, NADH and stimulated by ADP and NAD+. And step 3 is from glue alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA which can be inhibited by ATP, NADH and succinyl-CoA. So for the step number two, let's see step number two from isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate. So as I mentioned earlier, isocitrate dehydrogenase is the first oxidative decarboxylation step of TCA cycle. And it has two steps reaction, which one is oxidative reaction where isocitrate is oxidized to the intermediate oxalosuccinate. In the process, NADH NAD plus is reduced to NADH and later on will be used in ETC, electron transport chain. So when oxalosuccinate undergoes decarboxylation process, it can release carbon dioxide molecule and produce 5 carbon molecule of alpha ketoglutarate which will enter step number 3. Okay, how it's been regulated here? When cell needs to produce energy, what happens is isocitrate dehydrogenase needs to be activated. So in this case, ADP acts as allosteric activator and will bind onto a regulatory site of the enzyme and therefore increase the affinity of the enzyme for isocitrate molecule. So, so it can increase the rate of TCA cycle. So what happens if we have high energy? So when we have high energy, the allosteric inhibitor ATP will bind to isocitrate dehydrogenase and therefore decrease the affinity for the substrate. Furthermore, if we have NADH, NADH will also act as allosteric inhibitor by kicking out NAD plus by binding to a region of isocitrate dehydrogenase. So there's no place for NAD plus to bind on the enzyme. When there's no NAD plus, NADH cannot be um, produced, meaning NADH cannot be reduced to NADH. So when we inhibit this enzyme in step 2, eventually the substrate isocitrate will increase yes, since step 3 is reversible step. So citrate can also be produced and citrate will then be, uh, citrate will then can use to inhibit the step number 1 in glycolysis as well. 
and therefore reduce the rate of glycolysis as well as reduce the rate of step number one in TCA cycle. Next is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So how can we regulate this enzyme at step number three of TCA cycle? So basically this enzyme is allosteric enzyme and can be catalyzed by the second oxidative decarboxylation. So alpha ketoglutarate also that is produced in step three, we basically kick up a carbon dioxide molecule and replace with the coenzyme A to form succinyl CoA, similar with pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So when we oxidize alpha ketoglutarate, we can reduce NAD plus to NADH. So when ATP are plenty, so ATP, succinyl CoA and NADH will act as allosteric inhibitor. So they will bear, sorry. So they will bind to a special regulatory site at this enzyme and therefore inhibit the activity of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And therefore, the rate of TCA will also decrease. So when we inhibit this enzyme, what happens is the concentration of alpha ketoglutarate will increase. And this can use the excess of this substrate to produce specific type of amino acid. Remember that I mentioned earlier also that the intermediate of TCA cycle can be used to act as intermediate for catabolism and anabolism of other molecule. So that is how step two and step three of TCA cycle being regulated. So let's see of the energetics of CA cycle. So from step one to step eight, basically mostly are exergonic, where the cell produce energy. So overall reaction here from step one to step eight, pyruvate plus four NAD plus plus FAD plus one molecule of GDP and inorganic phosphate and two molecules of water and you produce three carbon dioxide molecule plus four NADH molecule and one FADH2, one molecule of GTP and four H plus ion. So with the total hexagonic energy is negative 77.7 .7 kilojoule per mole which is quite hexagonic. What is the relationship between the metabolic state of a cell and the ATP and NADH ratios? Huh? So when cell is in a resting metabolic state, we need a we need to use comparatively comparatively little energy. So meaning we have high ATP, but then we have low ATP levels, which implies high ratio of ATP over ADP. And also the substrate NADH high when high NADH meaning low level of NAD plus. So the ratio of NADH over NAD plus is high. So in this high energy state, we can shut down the oxidation and the enzyme system. In this case, cell in its resting condition. So when cells are in highly active metabolic state, what happens is we need more and we need to use more energy than the resting cell. So with this, we, we only have low ATP molecule, but high ADP levels imply low ATP over ADP ratios. And we also have low NADH, but high NAD plus level imply low ratios of NADH over NAD plus. So when this happen, we have low energy state, we, we need to turn on oxidation enzyme system. So cells are active. So you can find more explanation and description on this TCA cycle uh, from biochemistry 
textbook from Garrett and Grisham. But then any biochemistry books can also be referred to. So with that, we end the TCA cycle. The role of citric acid cycle in catabolism. Remember what is catabolism? From big molecule to small molecule. So the catabolism of proteins, carbohydrates and fatty acid all fits into the citric acid cycle at one or more points. So from the figure here, you can see at the left side, carbohydrates producing PEP via glycolysis pathways and from PEP to pyruvate. So you can see up there, there's a lot of amino acid involved that can go into the pyruvate. So this pyruvate later on will enter TCA cycle. And then from up here, you can also see lipids. Lipids, then it enter mitochondria via fatty acids and use beta oxidation pathways. And from there, they will produce acetic-CoA and this acetic-CoA will enter TCA cycle. Okay, on the right hand, on the right hand side, you can see lots of amino acid here. For example, isoleucine, leucine, tyrosine, lysine, phenylalanine, tryptophan. Later on, they will produce acetic-CoA via specific pathways and acetic-CoA will enter mitochondria and TCA cycle. Apart from that, other amino acid like glutamate, uh, sorry, like proline, arginine, they will produce glutamate. And then this glutamate will enter TCA cycle via, glut via succinyl coenzyme A. To summarize everything, all metabolic pathways, basically they are all related. And all of them operate simultaneously. In catabolic pathways, nutrients, many of which are macromolecules, are broken down to smaller molecules such as sugars, fatty acid, and amino acid. Small molecules are processed further and the end product of catabolism frequently enter citric acid cycle or TCA cycle, which plays a key role in metabolism. For TCA cycle in anabolism, where from small molecule to a bigger molecule, the citric acid cycle is the source of starting material for the biosynthesis of other molecules. If a component of TCA cycle is taken out for biosynthesis, it must be replaced. Oxaloacetate, for example, is replaced by the carboxylation of pyruvate. A reaction that replenishes TCA cycle intermediate is called an anoplerotic reaction. So we are not going to look further on anaerob uh, anal and a pleurotic reaction here. So the overview of citric acid cycle in anabolism here, from acetyl-CoA, it can produce pyruvate and carbon dioxide as well as oxaloacetate. So for mammals, pyruvate and carbon dioxide will produce oxaloacetate and in this pathway, ATP, will be used to produce ADP and inorganic phosphate. Okay, from oxaloacetate, it can enter TCA cycle. And the same acetyl-CoA, it can enter directly to TCA cycle. So there's two options. So in the TCA cycle itself, we can see from this figure as well, alpha ketoglutarate can have this transamination reaction to produce glutamate. So glutamate will later on will be used to produce small amino acid. So we have looked into this figure earlier, but this one is more extensive. You can see there's a gluconeogenesis included here, as well as uh, fatty acid, uh, amino acid, 
mm, and how it can be transformed to produce pyrimidines, lysine, uh, threonine types of other amino acid. So just have a look at these uh, figures, um, and if you can, if you have any question, just type in the comment and let me know. So to summarize the citric acid cycle, it plays a central role in anabolic pathways as well as in catabolism. And these pathways will give rise to sugars, fatty acid and amino acid that are all originate with components of the TCA cycle itself. So how can we link this to oxygen? So this TCA cycle is considered part of the aerobic metabolic process because of its link to the ETC electron transport chain as well as oxidative phosphor relation. So two molecules here, NADH and FADH2, two important cofactors generated by the TCA cycle will ultimately pass their electron to oxygen. So with this, we end our second lecture this week. Thank you very much.